but we are counting down the days to WrestleMania, which is 50 days to WrestleMania. As of tonight, about seven weeks, if I'm counting correctly. You know what surprises me the most is that we are a week away from Elimination Chamber, seven weeks away from a two-night, not one night, but two-night WrestleMania, and we only have two matches accounted for. Two. Two matches are currently on the dock for WrestleMania 40. That is Bailey versus EO Sky. And that is Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. Now, Elimination Chamber, we will see two more matches be confirmed. And from there, we're about six, about six weeks or less away from WrestleMania 40. I don't know how many matches are intended to be on both nights. But you still have championships that have not been confirmed to have a WrestleMania spot. And you think about guys like Logan Paul and Gunther who carry titles. You think about the tag team titles that the Judgment Day currently has. And... You know, you think about the women's tag team titles. You think about feuds that are just generating. And, you know, a lot of it could be done within the six weeks. But I'd like to see a little bit more being promoted as, you know, you're trying to get this show. You're trying to get WrestleMania 40 hyped up. It's a it's a big show. It's WWE's biggest show. And maybe they're just a bit distracted from this controversy between Roman Reigns, The Rock, Cody Rhodes, and Seth Rollins now. So, you know, I've heard reports about how this, there, they could, there could be even a tag team match of Roman and The Rock taking on Seth and Cody night one, which means you're calling for double action for a lot of them. There's a lot of talent there that deserves a WrestleMania spot. One guy that really stands out over the last few months, in my opinion, has to be Drew McIntyre. Right? Can you disagree with me if you want, but he's kind of been playing the biggest heel on Raw here lately. He's targeted Seth Rollins. Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, even Damian Priest. You're wondering, do you like him? Do you hate him? And, you know, it kind of, you feel like you're starting to see some true colors out of him. Hey, listen, I'm not, I am an elite star. I am, I deserve, or I belong at the top of the food chain here. And I'm going to demand respect. And, to be up there. You know, his you know, he's uh qualified for the elimination chamber last week. But the note the note to be mentioned for is that his contract's coming up. He's one of the few guys that his contract's coming up after WrestleMania. As a matter of fact, at the end of April. And so, you know. The question, you know, and I've talked about this a few weeks prior heading into the Royal Rumble. I've actually had this conversation with Steve Barber over there on Armchair Booking Wrestling Podcast. And the question was, what do you do with guys like Drew and Finn who have yet to sign another deal with the WWE? They could potentially be walking uh, out of April as a free agent. and um you know, they are kind of in the middle of storylines and feuds that you kind of want to see unfold. You know, one of the, my favorite ones that I've been hoping to see for here, you know, after the Judgment Day starts dismantling because all good things do come to an end, is a Damien and Finn Balor. I think that would be a good feud, May, even if it's for a championship. Hell, um, they currently held the 
you know, unified tag team titles at which I thought that last, what, two weeks ago when they faced DIY for the titles, they could have dropped them and led to something different. But Drew McIntyre is his contracts coming up and probably one of the biggest question is as he, as he heads into WrestleMania, one of the big, you know, as one of the, the biggest heels carrying raw right now, um, how do you utilize him? Um, interesting, you know, thought process for me when I saw that this, uh, limited, these qualifying matches came into place. There's a handful of guys that can argue that have already had existing or past storylines with Seth Rollins. So for me, it just makes sense. So, you know, for example, Logan Paul, you saw Logan Paul and Seth Rollins last year at WrestleMania. Now, Logan Paul has a United States wrestling, you know, championship. I just don't see that working out. Randy Orton has had a WrestleMania with Seth Rollins. You know, they have history with each other. Drew McIntyre has had history with Seth Rollins. And for me, when you start, for me, I look at it as what makes sense. You know, I know WWE can be spontaneous. And they can lead you into multiple directions. But when I look at it and what makes sense to me and how a storyline can make sense, and maybe this is too plain for a lot of people to listen to, but Drew McIntyre makes sense walking out of the Elimination Chamber as the number one contender to Seth Rollins World Heavyweight Championship. You know, Seth Rollins is still dealing with his knee injury. And the only concern that I have is what physical condition is Seth Rollins going to be in heading into WrestleMania, even if he doesn't have a match between now and then. But one small landing can alter the original plan for Seth Rollins' match. Now, I think... I'm going to go out there on a limb here on February 16th of 2024 that Seth Rollins will be dropping the World Heavyweight Championship. Matter of fact, I think that when it's all said and done, Damian Priest will successfully cash in his Money in the Bank contract and be Sir World Heavyweight Champion. My opinion. But how do you get to there? And when you look at storylines that just make sense, I see Drew McIntyre sitting at the front and center of that. I don't see Dominic Mysterio in winning that World Heavyweight Championship match. I don't think they'll put the title on him quite yet. Drew, Mc, Drew McIntyre is probably the closest thing that you have when it comes down to a face-heel concept for WrestleMania to challenge for that world heavyweight championship. You get to WrestleMania. And even if this has to be a triple threat match where Damien somewhere in the middle of the match to help Seth Rollins uh, and carry them him through that match. Remember Seth doesn't have to win or it doesn't have to be pinned or submitted to lose the match. So it could start off one on one. And as soon as, and if something happens to Seth Rollins where he tweaks his knee again or, you know, somewhere in the middle of the match, Damian Priest could come running out, cashing in. We've seen it before, becomes a triple threat match. And Damian Priest takes advantage of the vulnerability of both men. This event, you know, Seth Rollins then goes on and takes care of whatever he needs to take care of with his injuries. And this could also lead to a future feud between Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre, which we've seen already on Raw's in the past earlier this year. So that's for me why it makes sense. Too much, a little too much. When I see Damian, I see Drew in the ring. 
it's kind of like, dude, they they go 100%. I like what I'm seeing. Um, There's been reports and that there's been conversations of between WWE and Drew McIntyre. So it looks like they're trying to negotiate some sort of deal. But you look at right now the men that could create a good story. Maybe it's maybe this this feud, this storyline, whatever you want to call it, is too predictable. And I say so be it. It's the execution of how it's done that will determine how great of that storyline is going to be. You know, I could walk you through it and you can be like, well, it's just too predictable. It's one thing to talk about it. It's the next, it's next thing to execute it. And although even if it looks great on, it could look like garbage on paper, but if you execute it the right way, it could be something magical. You got Damien on Raw. You got um, you got Drew on Raw. You got Seth on Raw. It, the World Heavyweight Championship stays on Raw because, you know, in my opinion, for now, I mean, if Cody is to go on to win the unified, undisputed WWE Universal Championship at Mania, take it off for Roman Reigns. Then the that title goes to Raw, but you could automatically like he goes back to SmackDown because that's what the, the that's what the brand has. Um, the other guy that I was thinking that makes a really good candidate for winning the Chamber is Randy Orton. Um, and I think for me is I and I've said this weeks ago in the past. It's the same reason why I nominated him for winning the Universal Champion, the WWE Universal Championship off of that fatal four-way match at the Rumble to head to WrestleMania and face Cody Rhodes. And I thought that was a logical storyline, um, you know, and we didn't see that. So this is his second opportunity. Now, you know, listen, I, I would be second. I would be second to motion if I got a chance to see John Cena versus Randy Orton one last time at WrestleMania, especially I would hey hands down, drop whatever you're doing. Let's go for that. But I realize, you know, listen, Randy Orton has that feud with Seth. He's had a champion, you know, he's faced Seth Rollins before at mania and Randy doesn't have, I don't feel like Randy has much time in the ring left. Um, you know, I don't know. And, and I, I'm just, I'm taking it for what I see. It. He's had a couple major back surgeries done. Not one, not two, but a few of them. And this is why he went off, you know, for the last 18 months trying to recover. And, um, you know, I'm not, you know, he, listen, he has probably the best trainers, the best surgeons, and the best uh, therapists to help him recover and to get back into a sh shape he needs to be into. But I've also had recently a back surgery done, a fusion to be precise. And, you know, we were coming up on three months and I'm still struggling myself. Now, I'm not Randy Orton, but, you know, you know, either he's done one incredible job on selling or you can see that matches limit him. You know, the time of a match limits him in the ring and his ability to move. He was. From what I saw last Friday night, was it last Friday night? Yeah, when he won, when he qualified for that Elimination Chamber match. What I saw out of Randy Orton was that he was holding his back generously. And so I just feel that his time is coming near. And we may not have the same opportunity at next year's WrestleMania to have that one moment. Now, I don't, you know, like I said, you don't have to have a Drew or a Randy win the title. Like I said, you have Damien who has the money in the bank briefcase to make it a triple threat match. But, you know, it, it's just a thought out there.
but I see Drew. I see. I mean, this is going to be the same thing for Finn. It would be. I just don't see Drew going anywhere other than the WWE. I can't see him pick up and appear on AEW or even Impact Wrestling. So I like that the WWE is acknowledging acknowledging Drew, but I also like you know that this maybe has re sparked interest of all right. Well, now since you're using me correctly, I want to stay. Um, but that's. For me, that's where I like to see WrestleMania headed, which means you'd have to be pretty close to coming up with a deal with Drew because this is a few that ends up taking you into SummerSlam. Hell, it even takes you into uh, Survivor Series if the, all the cards are played correctly. 